Zkouška. Test, test. Hello. Whatever. All right. Are we going to wait there? <coughs> oh, yeah. If that's, I thought that was the last bottle. I was like, no, I'm not going to do that. All right. So let's just start it. So the first talk is uh, why the cloud is not always the holy grail. That. So hi, my name is Brian Prophet. I'm the community manager for the Overt Virtualization um, Product Project. Um, I'm based remotely in, in the United States. Um, our team, we have a good amount of team here in Brno and also in Tel Aviv and scattered out throughout the world. So this is sort of a response to, you know, this whole thing about cloud and how it's moving out and everything you hear is cloud, cloud, cloud. It's like, oh my God, where's the sun? So anyway, I blame Amazon. <laughs> Seriously, it's all their fault. Okay. <laughs> I, I, can't, I, I can't get over how they perpetuated this thing. Because they're making bucket loads of money, okay? So they went from this, 1995. Now, if any of you say, oh, I don't remember that, I, I don't like you. You're too young. But this is actually 1995 Mosaic Static HTML. This is how they got started. And their business model was this, selling books. And then it turned into selling other stuff and more stuff and more stuff. And then we all know the story. They got to do the holidays. They had to spin up all these servers. And then for the rest of the year, they had all these, this hardware that was just sitting around doing nothing. So they got the brilliant idea of renting it. And hence, we have what's known as the public cloud. And I've totally slammed years into two sentences. But the whole point of cloud... And people have still kind of get off on this definition a little bit. So let's do the refresher course. Cloud is virtualization with automation and elasticity. Elasticity is the secret sauce of cloud. Otherwise, all you've got is a virtual data center. Now, I say all you've got, and that sounds like it's something less than. It's not. They're basically different milestones on a long path that goes from a physical data center to a cloud operation. And not everybody needs a cloud. A university like this, or a university, a university like the one I work for part-time at home, does not need cloud, except unless they're doing some kind of experimental work. But for the date, you know, in theoretical physics or something like that where you actually need to scale. For the day-to-day -day administrative operations of a university, which is a classic example, cloud is not needed because they don't need the elasticity. Maybe they're going to add more services. Maybe they're going to add a new mail server. Maybe they're going to add new ident identity services, whatever. But those are going to be planned, scaled-out operations. They don't need a massive rush back and forth with scale, with scale. So when you think about cloud, and if anybody comes up to you and says, you need cloud right away, you know, resist. No, I mean, no, but seriously, think about it. Don't, you know, just don't just jump on the bandwagon. Cloud may be actually the good thing for your organization. I'm not here smack-talking cloud, but I am saying that you need to understand what exactly it is you realistically need, okay? Virtualization, which is a part of this entire story, whether you're talking a virtual data center or cloud, 
this, this is what really is making all this worthwhile. So this is virtualization before everybody had a separate box. After we have, ooh, magic. Guest operating systems running inside a single physical host and all the apps sitting on top of that. This is not new. This is not really rocket science for any of you. But obviously, the benefits of virtualization are going to be hardware consolidation. You're going to have bigger, faster boxes, which will hopefully be less expensive over time. You get better workload management for your applications. You get application protection where things are sort of kept together and um, you can have high availability and high performance built into your system. This is not cloud, by the way. This is just straight virtualization. You have scalability of resources. You can scale with virtual data centers. I already gave you a good example of that, where you have a planned operation that's going to pull out. And of course, the neat thing about virtualization that cloud doesn't provide, in order to actually take advantage of cloud computing, really take advantage of it, you're going to have to retool your apps because you're going to have to talk to APIs now and build in that automated scaling back and forth that goes up and down as you need it. Okay, If you just roll your legacy applications into a virtual data center, no recoding necessary. Take your platform, take it from the physical, put it on the virtual, boom, done. Well, there's a little more than that, but basically that's what you've got. It's way less complicated. There are lots of good virtual data center managers out there. Obviously, I like Overt, which is KVM based. We consider it to be an open source alternative to vSphere. Others include Zen, <coughs> which has been with the Linux Foundation since last spring, and it's very widely deployed hypervisor and very popular. Google's got Gennetti now, um, which manages both KVM and Zen nodes. Um, all three of these are excellent examples of what you can do with a virtual data center. Now, obviously, I like Overt. This is sort of Overt's architecture. And this is, I don't, don't memorize this. There's not going to be a quiz. Okay, I'm pointing this out to you because of all this architecture, there are three major components that I wanted to point out. You've got the engine, the node, and storage. That's not all that's in overt, but those are sort of the three major groups I wanted to highlight. And this sort of makes my point about this road from virtual data center to cloud, whichever you want it to be. Because if you look at this, if you, in, if you know anything about OpenStack or other cloud services, you're going to be like, hey, that looked kind of familiar. Sort of, kind of, if you squint at it. But here, let me, let me make it out. So this is basically a representation of OpenStack. It's modular, too. You've got identity services, object stores, image, dashboard. It's all there. It's modular. Um, with OpenStack, no service relies on the other. They're all out there independently. They're not getting nothing. They try really hard to stay away from bottlenecks. And that's sort of what Overt does as well with its own architecture. And just to make drive this comparison home, now this is back to the overt diagram. And now you see that these components that we had, the engine, the dashboard, the storage, they each have, and, and we are integrating now in overt, some sort of OpenStack component. You can use Neutron for SDN and Nova. Um, for the engine, and Glance and Cinder for the storage. And Horizon, the dashboard for Horizon uh, looks a lot like what we have in our engine here. I'm sorry, this is Node. That's engine. I pointed at the wrong thing. This goes to tell you that virtual data centers are not a dead end. If you really need to, you can start with a virtual data center, and if you know, you make a million dollars because Justin Bieber holds your product up uh, during his mugshot and suddenly you're flooded with 8 billion um, web orders. You can go and you can scale. Virtual data centers are not a dead end, nor are, is the cloud the be-all, end-all. Open, OpenStack have a lot of shared features. Um, 
The big difference between them over scales up, open stack scales out. The classic metaphor is over treat servers like pets and open stack treats them like cattle. So if you are vegetarian, perhaps a better example would be overt treat servers as a craft, takes loving care of them, where OpenStack treats servers like an assembly line of manufacturing. So yeah, you can with overt or any of those other tools I showed you, you can use virtualization um, to do your virtual data center now. And if that's where you need to stay, that's great. Don't kill yourself trying to move to the cloud. But if you need to, you can move to it later. So with that, thank you very much. This is the information for Overt, and I have a couple of seconds for questions if anybody has anything or wonders why I'm even here. <laughs> so, anybody? Oh, you guys are good. simply that I can say that I can exchange each other with Right, me. right. And I would say you're basically making the same argument that I did. I was using use case. You're using application. But it's basically two sides of the same argument, which is, you know, you do have to look at your requirements to see which is going to be better for you in the long yep. run. You know, I was just coming at it from a use case scenario because I teach in a business school, so it's all about business. 